What is good? Fuck. Good. <laughs> Everyone. Shoobs here. <laughs> this is so <some> scum. <laughs> Just want to note that Akko sent the switches in for a honest review, and you can use the link down below for uh, to help out the channel if you're interested in the switches. Also, if you could consider subscribing and liking the video, because this video was a pain in the ass to make, <laughs> and it's a long one too, so I hope you guys enjoy. Shoobs, where's the Akko switch? Shoobs, where's the Akko switch? Akko switch review what soups where's the Akko switch review where's the Akko switch review are you going to do the Akko switch review shoops what is good everyone shoops here today is the day that many of you have been waiting for the big bad budget switch review featuring the Akko CS switches uh, to be quite honest with you, I've been putting uh, uh, this off for so long now, <laughs> mainly because of the sheer amount of tedious work that I would have to do for the sound tests, and I finally put on my big boy pants and stopped procrastinating, and I'm in pain. The switches featured here aren't necessarily going to be all the different kind of budget switches in the world. To be quite honest with you, the selection is quite limited, because I don't have that many uh, budget switches in my collection, but these are some of the very popular go-to options when someone mentions budget in this godforsaken hobby. So the switches we are going to be looking at today, again this is not the widest variety but it should give you a general idea, it's going to be the Akko CS Machas, Akko CS Rose Reds. This section is not very budget, but it is rather popular switches, so I wanted to throw it in to give a general idea, you know. Uh, lavenders, Tangerines, Banana Splits, Alpacas, MX Blacks, KS3 Yellows, uh, Milky Top Yellows, Hippos, uh, what is it, Blue Velvets, the Linear Versions, Sea Salt Lemons, KTT Sea Salt Lemons, uh, the Akko, and... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm getting ahead of myself. And for the tactiles, we have the Akko CS Blue Ocean Blue. Wait, let me see what these are called. Blue Ocean Blue. Okay, I was right. <laughs> uh, Ergo Clears T ones. Um, Cherry MX Browns. Glorious Pandas. Otamu Skies. The Blue Velvet tactile versions, as well as the Boba U4Ts. So looking at the stems of these switches, I was surprised to see that the Akko switches and the KTT Sea Salt actually feature pretty long uh, poles. They're pretty much in length with NK Cream stems and um, I tried Franken switching it with them. Uh, I put them in JWK's Gatorons and Cherries and out of all of them, on it only seems to fit Gatoron housings. So there might be potential with that, but that was interesting to find out. Also, the uh, long poles on the Akko and KTT switches actually doesn't make it have that sort of faster bottoming outfield because the, the housing was made with the longer pole in mind, so the travel distance is still standard. Looking at the stems of the tactile switches now, uh, the Ocean Blues actually do have a slightly longer stem as well, but it is uh, slightly under the length of the longer pole boys such as the Boba U4Ts and the Blue Velvets. So here is another scuffed stem wobble test. Keep in mind that batch variants, switch variants, yada yada yada, so this isn't going to be 100% accurate, just take this with a grain of salt. But here, the matcha greens are pretty tight, the aqua rose are pretty tight, KTT lemons pretty tight, Tixie blue velvets pretty tight, Gator on yellows a bit wobbly, the milky tops, KS3s also a little wobbly, Hippos a little wobble, I got MX blacks a bit of wobble, banana splits a little wobble. Tangies, a little wobble, and lavenders, a little wobble, and then alpacas are decently tight. These are the V2s. Uh, the ocean blues, pretty tight. T1s, a little wobbly. 
Blue Velvet Tactiles, Little Wobbly. Glorious Pandas, pretty tight. MX Browns, a little wobbly. Ergo Clears, a little wobbly. Boba U4Ts, tight as hell. And Otemu Skies, a little wobbly. But again, this isn't going to be 100% accurate. And there's that. So for the sound test, we're going to be using the KVD67 Lite. Because if you're watching a budget video, I'm pretty sure this is sort of the board you might have and what you are trying to figure out what switch you want to put into it. So, uh, usually I use the mode 80, today I'm using the KVD67 Lite. All the switches will be tested in the Z position, as the position of the case, or, or the switches on the case affects the sound heavily. And always keep in mind that everyone's lubing technique, uh, room acoustics, desk setup, mic, yada 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 is different, so take this with a grain of salt. We'll be testing the switches both stock and then lubed, and we will also be doing a full sound test of the Aku switches with um, the more budget PBT keycaps as well as a GMK set so you can differentiate the sound. Uh, and yeah, let's get into it.
Before we go into my thoughts, I just want to say this is my own opinion and what I've experienced with the switches on hand. Uh, your experience and opinion might differ and uh, yeah, don't give me shit about it. So for the smoothness of these switches from buttery smooth to rice cracker scratchy, uh, the JWKs, especially the Tangies, were the smoothest, and Alpacas and Banana Splits, these two are basically the same. The Gatoron Hippos were actually very smooth as well when lubed. Lavenders were also quite smooth, and the more budget switches, the KTTC Salt Lemons, the Akos, and the Gatoron uh, Yellows, KS3s, and Milky Tops were very similar in smoothness, and the uh, retooled blacks were a little bit scratchier, but still quite smooth nonetheless. And the PME material of the blue velvet switches by Texi were a little bit on the scratchier side. However, uh, all of these uh, in comparison to a NK cream are quite smooth and the NK cream still stands at the very top of the scratch food chain. In terms of the sound profile of these switches, the nylon based housings such as the Lavenders, Hippos, and the retooled MX Blacks were on the deeper end. The Blue Velvets and the different ye uh, Gatoron Yellows, KS3s and Milky Tops were slightly less deep than these ones, but still pretty deep nonetheless. The KTT Sea Salt Lemons and the Akko switches were not were right in like the middle. It wasn't the deepest, but it wasn't the highest pitched. It was a nice middle ground. The Tangies were on the higher end, uh, higher pitch end due to its unwipe housing. Um, the banana splits and the alpacas were pretty similar, but leaning more towards the higher pitched as well. For the tactile switches, obviously this is going to be subjective, um, but it's what I feel. Uh, the Boba U4Ts were the most tactile out of this collection of switches, then the Glorious Pandas, then T1s, then Ergo Clears, and then these three, including the Akko Ocean Blues, were slightly less than the Ergo Clears, and the P not pewters, the MX Browns were the least tactile, <laughs> I mean, obviously, but I would say that the Akko CS Blues fell like a little underneath a Ergo Clear, but it has quite a pleasant bump to it, and I actually sort of like it. In terms of the sound profile of these switches, the Boba U4Ts were the deepest, and then Glorious Pandas and the Blue Velvets. The Cherry Switches, the MX Browns, and the Ergo Clears were in the middle. They were still on the deeper side. Uh, they're very similar to the um, Akko CS Blues as well as the Otemu Skies. And I found that the T1s were slightly higher pitch content uh, compared to these, but all of these switches were on the deep, deeper end of the sound profile. And uh, I would say like a high pitched a uh, sort of tactile would be like pewters or kiwis or something like that but those were on the pricier side and so i didn't include them but these were on the deeper end of the sound spectrum in terms of pricing the tangerines lavenders and banana splits are the most expensive coming in at around 65 cents a switch these aren't necessarily a budget option but i included them because they are quite popular alpaca v2s come in at around 55 cents a switch Hippos around 50 cents, uh, Blue Velvets around 47 cents, Retooled Blacks around 39 cents, uh, KTTC Salt Lemons around 27 cents, uh, KS3s and the Milky Top Yellows come in at around 24 cents depending on the vendor, and finally the Akko Switches come in at around 22 cents a switch. So in terms of budget linear switches, we can take these and just yeet them. And then we can take a look at these, which are under the 30 cent per switch range. So for the real budget linears, do these Akko switches as well as the KTTC Salt Lemons perform head to head with the greats that is the Gatoron KS3s and the Milky Tops? The short answer is yes, the switches are smooth and perform superbly well for the price. I wouldn't say that the Akko switches necessarily feel and sound better than the Gats, but they do have a different sound signature and is as good as them in terms of smoothness. 
The only downside of the Akos as well as the Sea Salt and KTT switches in general is that they use kale style housings and are also only 3 pin. But that <laughs> the the downsides for the price, it's like you can't really complain. The housing on the oh, it's, it zoomed out too far. The housing on the KTTs are actually quite quite tight. I feel like the Gatorons need film, but the KTTs definitely do not need film, and that I guess that could be a plus. Uh, and honestly, the switches they're they're pretty good for the price, and it's dirt cheap too so I gotta say that I'm quite impressed. In terms of pricing for the tactiles, the Glorious Pandas are the most expensive coming in at 70 cents a switch, then the both OU4Ts which are around 60 cents per switch, then T1s which are around 55 cents, Otamu Skies which are around 50 cents, or then the Blue Velvets which are around 47 cents, and then the Ergo Clears which are around 45 cents. Then MX Browns, which are around 35 cents, and finally the Akko Ocean Blues, which are around 22 cents per switch. So, in terms of tactiles, tactiles are usually quite a bit more expensive than linears, and these are the same price as the Akko linears, so these are 22 cents per switch. That's pretty insane. I think this is probably one of the cheapest uh, tactile switches that I've tried and honestly these are very very good for the price and this is a pretty much a no-brainer choice if you are a beginner trying to try out some tactiles. This isn't the strongest tactile but honestly you feel the bump. It's, it's stronger than an MX Brown so if you're coming from that you are definitely going to have a new experience with this and for 22 cents a switch you, it's, there's honestly no real downsides. Uh, there is one, actually, I shouldn't say none, but there's one downside, and that there is slight leaf ping, I found, even after lubing, but this is only when you really bring it up to your ear. Uh, if it's actually on the board itself, you don't really hear it, and the leaf ping's actually, <laughs> actually, like, better than the Glorious Pandas. The Glorious Pandas have some real serious leaf ping, and this is a 70 cents uh, switch, while this is a 22 cents switch. So, uh, the Akko CS uh, Ocean Blues, uh, pretty good for the price, pretty good tactile. Overall, these Akko switches were a pretty pleasant surprise. I'm surprised at how good they were for the price, especially the tactile. The linears, there is still, you know, the gate Gateron yellows, the KS3s, the milky tops, as well as other KTT switches. So there is other options from this, but in terms of tactiles, the Ocean Blues is, for the price, one of the best, I think, in terms of affordability. Uh, but overall, a pretty decent set of budget switches from Akko, and I'm happy to see that more and more uh, budget options are coming out. Anyways guys, thank you so much for the support, we hit 37.5k, it's crazy, and we also got that reply back from Kiara, let's go, that shit is going to be crazy, and uh, yeah, this video was, oh my god, I'm glad I did this video, I'm, I'm finished with it, cause that took a long ass time to make, anyways, thank you guys so much for the continued support again, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.